Hi there, my name is Matt and this is my fully operational BB-8. In this video series, I'm going to show you how you can make your own one. So one of the first things you're going to need to consider when you're designing your BB-8 is how he's going to work. And essentially there are two options that you've got. Uh, one is called a hamster drive mechanism, and that is basically like a radio controlled car that drives around inside the droid with a stick with magnets on the end that allows the head to attach. Your other option is what's known as an axle drive, which is where uh, the drive mechanism is connected via two fixed hubs, either side of the sphere on the inside, and the drive essentially overbalances uh, itself um, within those two hubs and allows the droid to move forwards and backwards and it tilts to allow it to drive side to side. It still has the uh, stick with the magnets on the end to, to hold the head on. Uh, that's common to, to both of those designs. And of course there are some options which are effectively in between those two. Now if you're not sure which one to choose, what I'd recommend doing is visiting the BB-8 Builders Club website uh, or the Facebook page if you prefer, uh, but the website's probably easier to look at build logs and just find some other people who've done similar drives to the one that you are considering. Um, they'll give you a really good idea of what it takes to put one together and vaguely sort of how it works as well. Um, there are actually some um, freely available designs out there, um, particularly for the uh, axle drives, uh, where people have developed their own and then made those plans available to other builders. Um, I'm quite happy to make my plans available to other builders um, you might not find them as useful uh, as I do um, because my BB is actually 9 tenths scale, not one to one, because he's got a 45 centimeter diameter body rather than a 50 centimeter one. Um, and also, it uses a few sort of components that I had <laughs> lying around in my garage here um, rather than just having a, a particular uh, build list that you can go out and buy. Uh, most of the stuff that was used to build it was from. Um, AliExpress from China, good old AliExpress, couldn't have done it without you, nice one. Um, so, um, well I guess before we, uh, before we dive in, let's have a look at um, how an axle drive works. And in order to do that, I'm going to use Lego, because I love Lego. This is BB-8's main drive mechanism, or my BB-8's main drive mechanism anyway, because there are lots of different ones out there. Uh, it's pretty simple how it works. Let me talk you through it. Uh, basically, he's got um, two main drive motors, one each side, and they attach to the side of the sphere on the inside um, with two axles. And they're exactly halfway up the sphere, so at its equator. And uh, because the main mass of the drive is hanging down, that means that when you drive these motors um, forwards, it will attempt to move that mass um, forwards and up. And because it's now overbalanced, it basically causes the sphere to start rolling forwards. Uh, these blue legs are not part of the main drive mechanism, really. This is just a frame to demonstrate how the drive works. So um, as it tilts forwards, that causes the sphere to overbalance and he drives forwards. And basically, as long as those motors are turning and attempting to lift this mass up and forwards, uh, he will continue to drive forwards. When you want to stop, you just stop the motors turning because the mass is now central to the um, centre of the drive. BB-8 will stop. And if you wanted to drive backwards, well, you just drive the motors the other way. Simple. Steering is slightly different. There's one motor for steering. It's attached, its output is attached by steel cables to this main frame and turning that motor moves that mass, that heavy mass from side to side. Uh, when the mass is over on one side it causes the sphere to tilt over and because that mass is now on one side the sphere will tend to roll in an arc um, just like uh, crown green bowls do when you, when you throw those because they've got a weight on one side of the ball. They go in a, in, in a curve. Now obviously to steer in the other direction you just swing it the other way. Uh, to adjust the tightness of the curve you can actually do two things. 
um, you can either adjust the amount that the mass is leaning by, the more you move it, the tighter the turn, or you can adjust the speed that BB-8 is rolling forwards or backwards with at the time. Um, the slower he goes, the tighter the turn will be, and that's just um, the gyroscopic effect, uh, like on a bike. His head is independent of those two, um, of those two motors, so it's not fixed, it's controlled by two servos, which can move the head, control arm backwards and forwards. Um, you'll notice that they're on the same axis as the... Um, everything's on the same axis, really, which is basically um, turning at a point right in the middle of the sphere, and that means that everything remains uh, equidistant from the inside of the sphere, so it doesn't crash into the side of the sphere when it's driving forwards or backwards. Um, but, it, yeah, his head can uh, go forwards and backwards with those servos, and to turn it, um, there's a continuous rotation servo, not pictured here, which um, turns the magnet array from side to side, uh, sorry, ro rotates it from side to side, um, which then causes his head, which has a corresponding magnet array on it, on the outside, to, to also spin. Okay, so you, you've seen how the drive mechanism works now. Uh, now it's time to consider what you're actually going to make BB-8 from. Uh, now, most people actually 3D print the whole thing. Um, that's the head, the body sphere, and even a, an inner frame that the um, sphere panels um, bolt to. I took a slightly different route, and I'll explain the reason that I did that after I explained what I actually did. So the, uh, the head is 3D printed, um, very similar to how every other droid builder has done it. Um, the body is actually a street lamp globe. That is, it's a plastic rotocast globe that's normally used for um, street lighting. Uh, I found a company that makes these uh, here in New Zealand. They made a 45 centimeter one, which wasn't quite big enough, but it was big, big enough for my needs anyway. And the reason I chose that was because it allows me to, or it had allowed me, to actually create um, a static droid relatively quickly. Um, if you're 3D printing all of the outer panels and a skeleton has put it on it, it's going to take you a long time. Um, it could take uh, upwards of a year for you to be able to 3D print all of those parts, have them dialed in so that they fit correctly. Using this method, I already had a sphere and I used vinyl decals, which are also available from the BB-8 Builders Club. I had those printed out locally and just stuck them on. And basically that meant that I had a finished droid um, within just a couple of months. Um, he didn't do anything other than um, he had lights in his head. But you can still have fun with that because uh, what I actually did was got a Bluetooth speaker and I hid it behind him, um, just underneath his base, and I had it connected to a, a freely available app which had BB-8 sound effects on it. So I could stand nearby and I could make him talk to people when they came up to, to interact with him. What I also did was use the guts of a toy remote controlled car to jury rig up a very basic um, spin mechanism for his head that allowed his head to turn. So I could, in one hand I could have this remote control and spin his head round, and the other hand I could have this, uh, this phone app to make him talk. And that was actually a lot of fun, very cheap, um, very simple to do compared to actually making a fully functional BB-8. What that also allowed me to do was to break up the build into, um, into two parts effectively. And, and that allowed me to keep my motivation up for the project, which sometimes can be um, quite daunting when you're doing something this complicated. Um, so I could um, break it down into the first stage, which was making a static droid, which was painted and lit up, ready to go. Um, then a sort of stage 1.5, where he had that basic spin mechanism and the ability to talk through the phone app. And then after that, I could work on the actual drive mechanism. Um, which I could do separately to the droid. So while I was working on the drive mechanism, I still had a BB-8. He could still um, he could still go to shows. He could still interact with people, and um, it was something that I could look at and be proud of while I was getting frustrated with building the drive system. So um, that is what I did. You don't have to go the same way. You can choose. Um, some people even use pre-made domes um, to to make the head out of. That's fine. Uh, the only thing I'd say is with the domes is you need to bear in mind it needs to be as lightweight as possible. And that is because any extra weight that you have in the dome is going to severely affect uh, his performance. His head will be more likely to fall off because you'll need stronger magnets. Um, it, it just increases the difficulty level of making a smooth operating droid 
if you have a heavy head. So whatever you choose for it, go for something lightweight. For the body, I have seen uh, a few videos that are out there, particularly one from a, a very gifted, um, uh, very gifted kid that went viral um, about a year ago, um, where he made the body from uh, papier mache, and he might have used some fiberglass as well. Now, um, what you might notice if you ever watch that video is you never actually see him driving it properly with the head on. You see him uh, puppeting the droid, that is, he's out of shot moving it around with the head on. And you see him driving the ball around. Um, he uses a hamster drive mechanism, and it works fine doing that. But what he found was, which he doesn't really go into much detail about in the videos, was that when he put the head on and the magnets were clamping down, it would actually deform the sphere um, to the point where the magnets would foul on the inside of it and it just wouldn't drive forwards. And so when it, whatever you choose to make the body out of, make sure that it's as rigid as possible. This is about eight millimeter thick uh, polyurethane or polyethylene, I think it might actually be. Um, but it is pretty tough. And even then, with it being eight mil thick and pretty tough, it still deforms with the weight of the drive and the head in it to a small degree um, because of the cutout that I've got for accessing his drive mechanism. So I reckon that's about as... Uh, as minimal as you'll get away with with the um, body construction but have a look around um, see what you can find decide what's best for you okay so where to from here uh, well the answer is um, I'm going to show you the CAD design that I put together for BB-8 uh, so once I decided on the drive system once I have decided how I was going to approach it um, I started to um, to draw it up in a, a 3d um, modeling software and what I'll also do in the next video, which will be about that 3D modeling uh, process, is I'll provide you with a download link to download all of the CAD design that I did, that I spent months doing, so that you can uh, put it into your own CAD modeling programs. And if you wanted, you could actually 3D print it too. Do remember my BB-8 9 tenth scale. So um, he's not fully sized. So if you've got a BB-8 that you're already building and it's fully sized, Please don't start downloading and printing out all those parts because you might be disappointed. It will be a bit smaller than you imagined. But look, if you um, like this video, if you're interested in seeing how BB-8 was put together, stick around, subscribe, give us a like. Um, otherwise, I'll see you in the next video.